Hello, you are listening to the Caged Canary podcast on Before Magic. I'm your host, Maddie Gilbert, also known as Maddie the Magician. This is our first episode, our inaugural episode, our pilot episode, and it's called How to Become a Magician. And I thought this would be the greatest topic to talk about for a first episode since there are a lot of people here who are learning about magic maybe they want to become a magician or maybe you're a magician and you just want to get to the next level we're going to talk about everything you need to know to do that so let's begin I started out like a lot of people started out by learning about magic on the internet the internet was very new when I was young and it was accessible for the first time so naturally I looked up my hobbies and my passions and one of the things I was interested in was magic and I didn't know how to find out about the secrets of magic or the world of magic so I would go on the internet and I would search it I would watch videos of famous performers and not so famous performers and I would try to learn as much as I could and there was a lot of misinformation there was a lot of low-level entry information. There were a lot of people exposing tricks who didn't know how to perform them properly or just making up tricks that weren't of a high standard that we're used to in magic, or at least that I'm used to now. Um, so I, here's the thing. No matter where you begin in magic, it sort of all leads to the same place. Oh, and although there are many different branches, the highest branches are all sort of universally applicable. I believe that if you learn one thing very well, you're going to be able to excel in other areas. So to continue speaking about the internet, there are a lot of facets of the internet and the largest growing facet today is YouTube and there's a lot of debate on YouTube is magic the right place to learn YouTube is magic the right place to teach YouTube there are a lot of people magicians putting out tutorials and other instructional videos on YouTube and there's a lot of controversy and debate whether this is the right way to go or whether we should be going and looking in other directions the quality on YouTube for the most part is very high in terms of production value from the people who are trying to build a YouTube channel by doing this. Some of the production quality is low, but a lot of it is high. The most important thing beyond the production quality, the production quality is one thing. It's what makes these videos watchable for people who are new to this stuff and who are not really there for the quality of the content. Uh, they need that production value. So in terms of that, the, there's a lot of production value. But the, the bigger question is, is this the right way to learn? Are you going to be learning things that you can use? Yes, you can learn things that you, you can use. And there are people who can teach you things that you can use and develop and use as material if you're a beginning magician. I personally have a problem with teaching on YouTube. It's simply because I love the art, I respect the art, and I would rather certain secrets be behind certain barriers. I believe that secrets are alive and that they protect themselves. But when you just put the secrets out on wholesale, for example, in videos, and you have a lot of subscribers, I believe you're damaging the art of magic. So, but again, this is not me criticizing people who are doing that. I think you can put tutorials on YouTube, but I would not put secrets on YouTube. I would teach card handling, coin handling, um, techniques that do not involve magical secrets. But, is magic, is magic being taught on YouTube? Yeah. Uh... So it's definitely an option if you don't have any other options. But really, it's the lowest level option. I feel uh, on the internet right now, it's the lowest level option. And it has the lowest price of entry. It's free. You, You can watch things there. And, you know, you get what you pay for. You really get what you pay for. So the quality may not be there. And I will say... 
I will say this at great risk of being debated. I do not believe that anybody teaching any magic on YouTube is a good magician. This is my personal opinion. I don't believe that anybody teaching magic on YouTube is a good magician. Um, there are a lot of good magicians who make instructional videos, who write books, who teach, but none of them are teaching publicly on YouTube and exposing magic publicly on YouTube. Which brings us to our next part of the internet, which is websites. Websites are what I used when I was first learning about magic, and these were websites that had magic tricks on them and PDFs of magic books and so on and so forth. Most of these were not giving the credit to the creator, to the authors, and most of this was stolen material. Uh, I did not know and I was not aware that this was stolen material at the time because I did not know about magic. So I just was trying to learn as much as I could and I, I would read this stuff and learn and try to pick up and I knew that the quality wasn't there. I would always sort of be like, oh, there's this great magic that I'm watching on the David Blaine specials and David Copperfield and Darren Brown doing and it's amazing. And then I'm reading these things and the level <laughs> that it's at is just much, much lower. And that disparity was noticeable even to me at that time, that point in my magical development. So there, there is a huge disparity and you want to be able to find good information. And it brings us to the next part of the internet where people are giving good information Sometimes, not all the times, but a lot of times. And these are through magic companies. Uh, you have magic companies that are online and their business is selling you magic. And the magic that they sell is instructional videos and many times they sell DVDs with little gimmicks or props that you will use in the routine. And such companies are very popular on the internet. There's companies like Tenyo, there's companies like Illusionist, Theory 11, Dan and Dave, Art of Magic, uh, Penguin Magic, Murphy's Magic, and the list goes on and on. I'm leaving out a lot. There are a lot, and some of them are bigger than others. Some of them are more specialized in, in certain areas, but they all focus on teaching magic and selling magic. So there's those and many of those companies, actually all of those companies work with very good magicians to release content and their content for the most part is very highly produced content. The video quality is amazing, the sound quality is amazing and most of the times the tricks are very easy to learn. I mean one of the big parts of marketing magic and selling magic is to create it in a way that is easy to sell and easy to teach and easy to learn. So they really go after tricks that are easy for you, the end consumer, to learn and to consume. And a lot of them, you know, are a proper way to enter into magic. Uh, you will hear me later talk about books and how useful that is in the different avenues of learning magic. But I believe that some of these videos are very good. You know, not everybody wants to become a magician. There are a lot of people who just want to learn a trick or two tricks. They want something that they can do at parties. They want something that they can do at work, on their lunch break, or at the bar, or wherever they want to do magic. They just want a little quick piece or two pieces and for me these websites really provide that and here's the thing like anything else you're going to get what you put in out of what you are learning so if you learn a trick and it's just a quick thing that you learn and you're doing it most likely it's gonna work and it's gonna be okay it's gonna be okay it's gonna be passable 
and uh, you're going to be able to get a lot of enjoyment and entertainment value out of that. But on the opposite side of that coin is you get a lot out of the practice and the work that you put in. So if you really are focusing on developing as a magician, developing your skills at sleight of hand and working on techniques, working on real routines, full routines that require much more of you than simple, quick, one-off tricks, you're going to be also getting a lot more out of it. So, again, none of this stuff is easy. It's very easy to learn a thing or two, but it's not easy to go on further. But if you do just want to do a trick or two tricks and have that just as a fun little thing on the side, my best advice would be to look at what's out there, look at what that you think suits you for a party piece, whatever your goal is, and just look at what is available and purchase it. And then work on it, work on it, work on it, and do it as best as you can. And if you want to learn more, there's more resources, more resources for you. But if you just want to stop there, that is also okay. There's a lot of people who, who stop there and that is totally fine. We don't all need to be David Copperfield. <laughs> so, if that's all you want to do, you can turn this off right now. You don't need to listen to the rest. You pretty much have all you need in terms of information, in terms of everything. So go out and, and do that. Find something that you like, learn it, learn it well. For those of you who want to go to the next level, I'm gonna continue talking about magic videos um, it's not necessarily the next level but I want to continue talking about magic videos since we're already on it besides the quick little one trick two trick downloads that I'm talking about on these magic companies there are full DVD and sometimes even DVD sets with eight DVDs or six DVDs four DVDs and these usually run from anywhere from one hour to eight hours. Some of them are even longer. And these are produced by pro professional magicians and companies. And these are magicians teaching their professional material on these DVD sets, these video sets. Uh, these are usually very high quality. If you are looking to purchase one from... Uh, anything earlier than the year 2000 it is probably transferred into a download or you you might be able to get the VHS tape might be on a DVD but the quality is a lot lower um, magic DVDs magic videos per se have only gone up in in quality uh, shooting quality in the last decade or so um, it's had a major boost forward, but before that, it was mostly guys in their living room or, or videotapes of magicians giving lectures or workshops, and they would be sitting in a room, there would be no special lighting, it would just be a single camera or two cameras, and it would just be capturing uh, the action. And uh, the quality of teaching on these, for the most part, depends on the quality of the performer. Uh, a lot of these are very good and they are fun to watch. Even though they're a little bit older, some of them are a little bit older, they're a lot of fun to watch. And some of the new ones uh, you see coming out of a Studio 33 in Portugal and uh, Grupo Cops in, in Spain. Uh, these, these guys are putting out DVD sets of Famous magicians such as Paul Daniels, Rene Levon, Juan Tamariz, Jan Frisch, and they're in very, very good quality with subtitles in many languages. Um, obviously, check for that if you're in a different country and you want to be able to study it in your own language. Check to see if that's available. And uh, these these are extremely, extremely good and potent sources of of learning magic these are these are great 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 resources so if you do want to check those out um, definitely go check those out again these are 
videos made by professional magicians and for the most part they are showing depending on the magician most of them are pretty good or they wouldn't be doing a full DVD set some of them are not so good and they're just doing it for the money but you sort of have to develop a taste in order to uh, separate the wheat from the chafe and that taste is is very important and it's gonna you know it's gonna develop as time goes on but uh, definitely check those out if you want to learn if you have a favorite magician like Danny Dortiz or, or someone like that and you want to really sit down and and learn their magic their video is probably a good place to start if they don't have books um, the number one thing that I will give as a warning in terms of video is many times even though it seems that it's in depth it's not as in depth as the writing uh, it's just one of the things people are a lot more conscious of what they put on paper than what comes out of their mouth when they're filming sometimes people are filming for hours and hours straight and they forget an important detail to say it or um, you know you have little mix-ups like that so sometimes not everything is on these videos little details sometimes go missing that are very important and uh, but they are great to watch in order to see how the magician interacts how they move how they handle different moments in real time so they're great to watch like that my biggest warning though would be to not definitely not capture and imitate their style it's one of the biggest dangers I think of learning from video and watching a lot of video learning from video is you imitate the performer you imitate their style you imitate their presentation you imitate different moments and emotions that they that they put on the stage um, it's happened to me it's happened to everyone uh, you, you can see a great example uh, when Danny Dortiz was very uh, when he just exploded with popularity in the US and was becoming first known he had many DVD sets coming out and I would see this virtually all over the world but a lot in the US and North America people watching these DVD sets and imitating Danny Dortiz who is Spanish so all of a sudden these people who can speak perfect English have a have a Spanish accent and they're moving like Danny Dortiz and they are uh, they are literally little Danny Dortizes and um, it, it's very odd to watch when you know a person and then they transform into another person and you know that the reason they're transforming into that other person is because they have been watching those uh, they have been watching those videos too much so again you want to be able to get what you can from videos but it's a big danger to fall into copying and imitating certain performers and not developing your own routines one of the greatest things for me was uh, reading Mamonica which is a great book by Juan Tamariz and uh, working on a lot of the routines by myself for years and a few years later, a few years ago, now, uh, Dan and Dave, through their company, put out one of Juan Tamariz's uh, video series on Mnemonica. And for the first time, I was seeing Juan Tamariz perform these routines. Many of these routines I had only read about. And uh, for, for most of them, it was my first time seeing them perform by Juan. And some of these routines I perform myself. And I am so glad that I learned them from the book and I was able to develop them myself because I had a totally different style, a totally different way of doing it and presenting it than Juan Tamariz. And then when I saw Juan Tamariz, his way was also brilliant, but it was in his style. And uh, I just feel like if I would have seen him before reading and working on it by myself, I would have probably fallen into a trap of imitating him a little bit, a little bit, because when you see a master at work and they've done all the work of figuring out the timing and the presentation and, you know, the scripting, the, pa the pauses, the humor, you sort of 
get lazy and you copy it without even realizing that you're copying it so it was a big it was a big learning lesson for me to see that and 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 say to myself that wow i don't you know i don't need to learn this stuff from video i'm i'm sort of better off learning it by myself and then if i happen to see it on video down the line that's great because i can see how the uh, original creator did it or you know somebody else did it in their own style but it's not going to have as much influence on me as if I had seen it first so it's just something to keep in mind and uh, it's something I would definitely say to protect yourself uh, from I, I look at magic and the certain tricks that are classic and iconic as having sort of like a spirit to the trick and what I mean by that is an idealized version of the trick a way that everybody imagines it is but the reality never lives up to it and I want to be able to work based on that idealized version rather than somebody else's reality and just because I can approach it from my own way and discover my own process of uh, actualizing it than just copying somebody else so it's just just a small thing that you might want to consider um, which leads us to our next learning resource and that is the world of books uh, books have been published on magic or with magic in it for more than 500 years uh, I think we're going almost on 600 years now and there's magical references all throughout the history of the world and the written literature some of this relates to you know real magic some of it relates to the magic that we do which is performing magic but the different periods of history record magic in their own way uh, and magic started to be Magic started to be taught in books uh, a few hundred years ago, uh, but they only became, let's say magic being taught in books only became popularized in the last two centuries um, when you would see a lot of people publishing books on magic, publishing books on, on secrets, I would say the last two to three centuries. Um, some of these were people exposing other people's tricks. Some of these people were exposing their own tricks and selling them after shows. And some of these were people writing about magic. Uh, so, in terms of the books today, I think if you want to be well-read in magic, you have to read the classics. There are certain books that you have to read and that pretty much encompasses maybe a hundred books in magic and I'm not gonna name them all here we'll do a different thing where we're talking about individual books but there are certain books that have had extreme historical importance books that have card tricks uh, you know, whole whole books on card tricks being published for the first time. Then you have whole books being published on sleight of hand for the first time. Uh, whole books being published on mentalism methods, uh, that is, psychic methods and uh, divination, uh, mind reading type effects. And then you have coin magic books and all the different areas of magic are basically covered throughout history and and a lot of magicians a lot of traveling and famous magicians world famous magicians have written books and written biographies uh, autobiographies as well so these are obviously very good sources to look at um, in terms of books and learning from books the most popular books that are available right now are available from magic dealers so if you go on a magic retailer such as murphy's magic or your local magic shop or one of these online magic sites a lot of the magic companies online by the way do not sell books but murphy's magic does and uh... there's also vanishing ink that 
publishes and sells books, but I would check Murphy's Magic or your local magic shop and talk to the people there. Sometimes the magic shop owners are quite knowledgeable on magic. Some of them are not. Um, if you, do, But we will talk about hanging out at magic shops and talking to those guys and learning from the magicians who frequent them in a moment. I just want to say that books are a very good source. Um, if you, most of the great magicians of the last century, not all, not all, not all, but most, have written great books. And um, it's amazing to read these books because you really get a sense of who they were and the magic that they performed. And some of these magicians, there's either no video or almost no video of their work, but you can really capture what they did in those in those words and their and their magic comes to life when you read it and you you perform it for yourself so that is a great resource um, if you want to start looking into books I believe that books are one of the greatest ways to instruct your instruct yourself I I have a collection of books a little library of books and I'm constantly reading books I believe that it's the only way to really educate yourself in magic. There's no other way to educate yourself in magic. There's only so much that you can learn from watching documentaries and hearing stories and talking to other magicians. A lot of the details have been recorded by magic historians and people who are writing these books and by these magicians living in that time and in the different periodicals and magic magazines that have been running for more than a hundred years and these all for the most part have been preserved and and republished by different organizations so you can definitely check those out and they they are just a treasure trove of of information so I'm not going to give any specific book recommendations right now just because it's such a wide area and it would you know it would take hours to really talk about the books but I will say go and speak to people read what people recommend online and that will give you a, a starting point as I said it doesn't really matter where you start it more it, it, it's of much more importance where you finish and where you end up so don't focus on where you're starting so much just start and uh, you will eventually get somewhere worthwhile um, which brings me to talking about the the live physical locations the magic shops magic shops are uh, dying throughout the world there's certainly a lot less uh, magic shops magic stores in the US and in Canada, North America, Europe, uh, they are shutting down because of the internet. Um, people order almost everything online these days, and a lot of these places are going out of business. And uh, it's, it's, um, it's just something that's happening and something that we have to accept. Uh, but one of the great things about having a physical location, having a physical magic shop, if you have one in your area, is many times the local magicians, the magicians who live in your city or your town, will hang out there. And if you don't know anything about magic and you're just starting out, it's a great way to learn, to go meet the other people who do magic and to learn from them because most likely you are working on similar things or maybe even totally different things and you guys can teach each other but you will always learn from the people there and you may even have something to teach them as well so it is a great resource um, go meet the people in your area and get to know them and learn as much as you can from them try to ask them for book recommendations try to ask them for you know what magicians you should be looking at who is a great magician just ask them what their opinions are these people most of them will have had more experience than you and they've probably been visiting that magic shop or or traveling to see magic or they may even be profi professional magicians themselves 
and uh, you can ask them a lot of questions. So if you do have something like that in your area and you, you want to learn more, it's much better to ask in person. In many cases, in asking online, you'll just get a higher quality response and just better interaction when you're, when you're asking in person. Uh, many times these magic shops are the place or is, if it's not the magic shop, then the magic clubs uh, that are the place that host different lectures, workshops. And these are events thrown by professional magicians and creators of magic. They travel all over North America, all over the world, and present their lecture and their workshop. And what a lecture is, is it's basically a... It is, it is a lecture. I mean, it is what it sounds like. A, magi a magician who is in a, who's a master in their work or a wonderful creator will come by your town and do a lecture. They will perform a few pieces and teach them and talk about magic and really try to to teach their style of magic. And a workshop follows very much in those same lines. A workshop is usually much more intimate than a than a lecture it's much smaller it's limited to a small group of people and it's a lot more hands-on so they'll probably ask you the magician will probably ask you to bring certain props and you will work on material together and they will critique your work and uh, as I said most of these are held by the magic shops the magic clubs and something you may have heard about maybe you haven't heard about there are also magic conventions and uh, these magic conventions happen all over the world there, there are literally magic conventions in in dozens of countries uh, and these these are conventions that it's, it's hard to describe what a convention is every convention is so different some of these conventions are are close-up conventions they focus on close-up magic some of these are mentalism convention conventions uh, some of these are just regular conventions they're they're uh, they, they, they just focus on everything and um, what it what a convention is is there will usually be a few hundred magicians in attendance and the event is held in a convention center or a theater and there's programming all day. There's different lectures throughout the day from different magicians. There's different workshops, different talks and presentations. And uh, there's usually a dealer's room. So people from all over the country and the world come to sell magic in these dealer rooms. Um, oftentimes there's new releases that launch from different magic companies and book publishers at these events. And then in the evenings, there's usually a show a gala show or somebody's one-man show and uh, the gala show is a, a show with many magicians and they each have 15 minutes or 20 minutes and they they perform their their set and, uh, and then after that people are usually hanging out and talking about magic and sharing secrets until the early mornings so that is what a magic convention is, and uh, I, I, I've been to many, many magic conventions in my life. I've worked at many magic conventions. It is uh, a great joy to uh, travel the world and, and make friends everywhere you go, and uh, really good friends, and to be able to, to connect with them and, and work on magic together. So if you've never been to a magic convention, it's, it's definitely a something that you should do as a magician um, there are some that are better than others there's some that are horrible I won't name them I won't <laughs> I'll, I'll let you sort of take your chances at looking at what's out there um, but some of them are wonderful and uh, most of them are wonderful and uh, even if the events are, aren't always organized well, it's usually the, the caliber of the people that really make the event. So definitely something that you can look uh, and look for. The great thing about these conventions is you make friends. And hopefully some of these friends live in your area. 
Um, sometimes they don't. And the next resource that we're going to talk about, which is probably the best place to learn magic other than books. For me, I feel like books is books are the best place to learn magic just because you get so much depth and there's usually footnotes and you can check out the the references and you can it'll just lead you down this uh, rabbit hole of resources and you can really learn so much on your own time by reading but the next best resource or maybe it might be better in different ways is a mentor uh, a lot of people talk about getting a mentor getting a mentor in magic and uh, I will give you some advice on that. The mentor that you choose in magic must live close to you. Uh, this is a magician who has more experience than you, somebody who knows a lot more than you, who's better than you, and who that uh, you, you respect. And they also need to respect you and they want to spend time with you and and really teach you and see you develop uh there needs to be a mutual relationship there and the reason why i say you must live close together is you need to spend a lot of time together you need to be getting together uh as often as you can if you can get together every day great if you can't then you know, a few times a week is also fine. If you can only do once a week, that's okay. Um, but it should be as often as possible. And this is somebody who should constantly see you working. And by the way, this is not somebody who you always have to show new stuff to. You need to, you know, uh, impress by coming there every single day with something new that you've learned or you're working on. This is just somebody who you're going to talk uh, to about ideas and you're going to be able to sit and work with them on and this is somebody who's going to give you advice and uh, this is advice that's going to help you both in your magic and in your career and whatever you want to do with magic really uh, having a mentor is going to help you tremendously um, especially if they're helping you work on your magic uh, one of the things that they can do that a book can't do and a video can't do is correct you so they will be able to see you work and correct you. And the correction is one of the most important parts of learning. Uh, you really need to be corrected in order to learn something properly. Uh, I've seen many people who have been doing certain techniques for years and then they finally sit down, uh, and I've been there, they finally sit down with a master who has really worked on this their whole life, and the master sees them, and they've, you know, they've, they've been doing that technique for a few years, but as soon as the master sees what they're doing, they're like, no, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong, P pull in your finger over here, do this, and you can see it's hard for them because they've been programmed a certain way of doing it incorrectly for so many years but then when they change it they automatically notice wow this is so much better how did I how did I not know about this and it's probably because they either were not told about a detail when they were watching a video because it's virtually impossible to cover every single small finger placement and detail when you're doing a video um, and they probably left the information out of a book or maybe they've incorrectly learned it from the book but having a mentor who is uh, more experienced than you and who can sit there and look at you is going to be extremely beneficial and you're going to get a lot better quicker and also not only in terms of the correction they're going to show you how to practice they're going to show you how the routine is supposed to be done and if they are a good magician they, and they can do it at the level where you want to do it, being able to learn from them is is an invaluable resource. It's really irreplaceable. There's nothing, there's really nothing that can that can top it. So definitely check that out if that is something that you are looking for. It's very very hard to find a mentor. Um, I've had a few mentors at different points in my life. Uh, people who I've spent. Uh, a lot of time with and sometimes you know, I would consider some of my friends who I travel 
and see mentors who all stay at their house for a week or two weeks and we will talk about magic every every single day uh, pretty much all day um, but you you really want to find people if you are serious about getting better find people that you respect and who you can spend time with and uh, sometimes you will have that in your area you will be lucky and they will live in your city or town uh, many times you will not be that lucky and you will have to travel and you will have to develop those relationships so it's one of the hardest things to do in magic but it's one of the most um, it's it's one of the most fruitful you get the most out of it more than any other endeavor that you do in magic other than practicing correctly uh, not practicing incorrectly but practicing correctly uh, a mentor will will help take you to the next level so it's definitely something to think about if you are if you if you have a mentor if you don't have a mentor um, and you've never heard of this concept of mentorship just do yourself a favor and find an older magician somebody with who somebody who's really good who has more experience and try to build that connection and and uh relationship because they will they will help you become a lot better and uh, you will not regret it so i'm going to go over the resources again uh one more time there's the internet we talked about youtube and the different magic companies over there on the internet and what they're selling which is a great way if you just want a quick introduction of magic and you don't want to go into deep the next level after that is the professional videos put out by certain companies and professional magicians which cover their full routines and a lot of their specialized work that is also a great resource one of the things though is not to imitate you remember we talked about that so try not to imitate when you do watch all these videos because it's very easy to imitate and not be aware that you're imitating uh, the next resource which I consider a higher level resource is the books uh, these books are they, uh, there are literally thousands of books in magic um, you can ignore most of them you don't have time to read most of them but do yourself a favor and read what you are interested in become an expert in an area that you choose whether that's history whether that's card magic whether that's coin magic find an area that you intrigues you and just learn it as much about it as possible and it will lead you down different branches as well um, which takes us to the live locations these are the magic clubs the magic shops and the magic conventions these all have their pros and cons uh, but the best thing that you can get from these is meeting the magicians in your area meeting the magicians from around the world and making those connections and and making those connections which will hopefully lead to a mentorship because that I mean it's great to have friends in magic and it really is wonderful to be able to travel the world and visit friends and and do all of that it, it it's really one of the best parts of of being a magician but you also want to keep your eye open for potential mentors and these are people who I mean you will never you will never really broach the conversation you will never ask them oh, do you want to be my mentor um, you, usually it will just happen this will be a mutual relationship they will respect you they'll like your work and they will just talk to you and you will become friends and and spend more and more time together and uh, and they will teach you things that they don't teach other people and they will work with you on things that they don't work with on other people so definitely something to keep your eyes on I believe it's very important this has been a podcast episode of before magic this is our first podcast episode it's called how to be a how to become a magician this is uh, the, the name of the podcast by the way is the caged canary 
So again, this is our first episode. If you guys like what you are hearing, check back uh, next week. We plan to do this every single week, and uh, sometimes we'll have special guests. Uh, so tell your friends and tune in, and we will catch you on the next episode. Have a good day.